Okay, hostess with the mostest. Hostess, 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 hostess. It's like I've been drinking and I haven't. <laughs> uh, that was a good start. Yeah. One, one last, one last day on on the meds, and then. Who's gonna be more excited for you to be off of them? I think you are. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. <laughs> you, you've had to endure a lot of the side effect that dad's meds have had. Yeah, the um, we talked about this three days ago. Oh, we did. Yeah. Yeah. We had a few of those. Not my favorite drug. I told you that before. I had to go back on it. Yeah. Well. Hopefully you don't have to go on after this again. Let's hope. Okay. All right. Welcome back to This and That Coffee Chat with the Harrahs. I'm Kelly. This is my dad, Scott. Hello. He also goes by Kelly's dad, if you can't remember two names. I figure 11 episodes in, we should maybe actually introduce ourselves also, besides just the Harrahs. True. True. You, you aren't putting your, like, funny little titles up. On no, these videos. no, because I'm sure everybody has watched every video that we've ever produced <laughs> in in the past. If you haven't, go back and watch them now. <laughs> and as as one of my favorite YouTube uh, sensations, uh, the the gentleman lost in the pond. If you haven't subscribed yet, do so now. <laughs> <laughs> so he says it with a British accent. It's much funnier. <laughs> it's a little aggressive. Okay. Well, that's how he does it every episode. He's very aggressive with the... Subscribe. Okay, so, yeah. I'm going to have a sip here, and she's going to keep <laughs> on talking. All right. Well, we've got a fair amount of economic news that has come out in the last week. Before you start, mm -hmm. do you think you should maybe talk about a slight change-up in our format and what we're doing? More of the timing More of these the events. More the timing. Yes. Yeah, so we have reconsidered timing, and we are currently recording Sunday afternoon. So we're skipping a little bit forward from when we normally would have recorded. We're also not talking as much about sports and whatnot from the previous week and just kind of going with what happened this week um, because that's old news at this point. Yes, and... It was often awkward, you know, we have like three days of economic news, but we're, we're, we're still waiting for this to happen. And then, yeah. um, you know, and then we have to remember a week later to update you on what happened at the end of the week. So we thought it might just be better to record on Sunday after yep. most of the sports stuff that we're gonna talk about has occurred, not all of it, but most of, of it. it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will have all of the previous weeks economic data and real estate news and all that good stuff. Yes. So we won't be giving you half the story all the time. And mm -hmm. then my goal is to have these out by noon on Wednesdays. So maybe even noon on Tuesdays, depending on how I feel on Monday when I have to edit all of this. So depending on how you feel on Monday when you're off your drugs. Yes, but I have one more tonight and then so well, whether I'm on them or off them, uh, <laughs> it, it, it seems that it, it hinders me. So hopefully this will be the last of Sleepy Joe uh, version of me having to try to muddy my way through a video and editing of it. And then mm -hmm. um, hopefully the symptoms don't come back of my long-term yep. illness that I've been dealing with for over two and a half months now. And, uh, and, and then I will start feeling better and have more energy again. This is way more information, <laughs> and this might end up on the say, cutting room. Cut. Anybody else have anything they want to share today? Floor. <sighs> but uh, anyway, that's our goal. Yes. Shoot on Sunday, publish on Tuesday. Or Wednesday. Or Wednesday. I'm shooting for Tuesday. I want to I wanna hammer that thing home and get it out. Okay. I have follow-up from last week before Let's do we it. get into economic okay. stuff. So, and I went back and watched our video from last week, and I think I totally had a fifth city for where would my five homes be okay. if I won the lottery tomorrow and decided to go buy five homes. I had a fifth city. I just was 
not thinking of it at that moment in time, and you're gonna laugh when you hear what it is. Um, I had my email up and got an email that I knew was not gonna be good like five minutes into our recording last week. Oh, uh, yes. And then it like threw me off for the rest of it. And so I think my brain was like focused on this email that I knew we had to address <laughs> right after we got done with recording. And so, note to self, if you have something in your email that you need to reference, just pull that into a new window so you don't see the rest of the nonsense in the emails coming through. Good, good plan. So this, this is a learning and growing experience. Yes. And so we've learned and we've grown. Yeah, lesson learned there. Yes. So my fifth city. Yes. Central Oregon, like sisters or something like that. Okay. Beautiful, absolutely stunning part of the country. Um, and yes, I've, I've often talked to Kelly that if I'm going to get a summer home, mm -hmm. it Central Oregon is high on that list. It's high desert like Tucson is. Mm -hmm. Beautiful Cascade mountain range where you can see seven snow-capped mountains from Redmond or Bend or Sisters. Yep. Can't see quite as many of them from Sisters because you're too close to them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but the three sisters are right there. Mm -hmm. Are right there, yes. Yep. So, so that yeah. makes my new list. Tucson, San Diego, Nashville, Sisters or somewhere and Spain or Portugal. Do you know the names of the three sisters? Faith, Hope, and Charity? Yes! <laughs> there you go. Trivia quiz for you at home. Hope you, hope we left enough space in there. Maybe I can put a count countdown. Mm -hmm. that, that'd be too much work. I probably won't do that. There's a vineyard not far from Sisters, That's between right. Sisters and the Redmond Airport, yes. named Faith, Hope, and Charity, or some order of the three. Yes. That my aunt and uncle and I popped into on the way to the airport, and then got to the airport about 20 minutes before boarding. Good thing it's a small airport. It is a small airport. <laughs> that was a little tight on timing. Yeah, so, so small that... Um, Central Oregon doesn't get a lot of snow. It certainly gets cold enough in the wintertime. They had a big blizzard a few mm -hmm. years back, and the Redmond Airport, I think they got like two and a half, three feet of snow or something like that. That's quite a bit. And the airport was closed for a month because they have no snow moving, removing equipment. And apparently the county was too busy doing the mountain passes yeah. to come down and plow their airport runways for them so that they could reopen. So... Um, that little community airport was closed for quite a while. And, and you know, United and Southwest and... Delta. Delta. I think I flew Delta. Yeah, all trip. fly in there. So yeah. they had a month's worth of canceled flights. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so there's my update from... It's a good choice. Last week. Yeah. I did choose a mountain place, but... Yes, you uh, just chose Colorado instead yeah, of Yeah, I might Central have to, Oregon. you know apple tree <laughs> i was gonna say there is a serious amount of overlap between our two sets of cities yes you, mean, didn't, you didn't have ireland but no i think mine was spain or portugal right instead of yeah but i had a coastal place in portugal you also said there or san diego that's true i did say your san diego trip uh, choice was quite good and then I, when I had, didn't have my fifth, I jumped all um, over Nashville. Nashville, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So yes, almost the same. Almost the same, yes. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is if we win the lottery, we just need to buy multi-gen housing in all these locations. I think that's probably the most <laughs> cost-effective way of doing this. Yeah. Well, yeah, we are going to be multi-millionaires when we win the lottery, so... You know, do we need to scrimp that much? <laughs> it just seems like a lot of extra effort to take care of the places. True. I mean, True. I know that's why you hire people, but still. Yeah. If you can have five homes or six homes instead of ten you, homes. You know, we'd probably need to talk to our tax guy about the <laughs> best approach to that. Yeah, that's like what trusts and stuff are for, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. That is out of my area of expertise out of my area of expertise as well. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Anything else to wrap up from last week? 
Well, I'll cover part of it in, in the your, economic okay, news yeah. because we still had the jobs data that came out at the yes. end of last week. And so we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you want to dive into what we've got on the econ side? Sure. <sighs> now, you know how much I despise clickbait. Mm-hmm thumbnails on YouTube. And there's one guy in particular who I will not name, who says that the world's been burning down for like the last two and a half years, mm -hmm. that the real estate market's crashing everywhere and whatnot and blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm not saying that the real estate market's crashing, but we have a, a set of data that, uh, see I did, data's plural. Mm -hmm. Data are. Data are. So we have a set of data that. But a set is singular, right? The set is. English as a foreign language is English. <laughs> <laughs> we have a set of data that has come out <laughs> since set is singular. <laughs> and there are two dates that uh, we have historically equaled. So when I go through this, we'll remind you, if, in case you're not a history buff, what happened on mm -hmm. those two historical dates. And let's just say... Um, it wasn't good? It wasn't good, no. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, uh, the year old... The, <laughs> one more day. <laughs> one more day on those meds. <laughs> Where's uh, the rewind uh, yeah, re sound effect? Mm -hmm. yep. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the yield curve has uninverted. And you think that's great. You know, long-term rates are actually higher than short-term rates and whatnot. Uh, unfortunately, uh, when the yield curve has uninverted in the past is usually when recessions start. It's a rock-solid predictor of that. And, uh, and this in, uh, inversion has been the longest in U.S. bond market history, total of 565 days, surpassing the uh, previous record of 410 trading days in the late 1970s. Hmm. More importantly, the depth of the yield curve was equal to that of the uh, or the depth of the inversion of the yield curve uh, was equal to that that was reached in 1929. And if you recall from your history books, that's when the Great Depression started, mm -hmm. was in 1929. So, um, question still is, you know, we're, we're a lot smarter now than we were then about monetary policy and whatnot. Right. And so can the Fed manage a soft landing still, or is it going to be a hard landing? That's the question. And so mm -hmm. uh, we're coming out of an inverted yield curve that equaled the leading up to the Great Depression. So mm -hmm. that's, that's news item number one for clickbait. So <laughs> any thoughts on that before I uh, move on to my next little bit? So uh, on, on the good news side, uh, oil futures are down 10%, which means oil prices are going to come down, which means gas prices are going to come down. The bad news is why <laughs> oil prices are down, and it's been driven mostly by fears of declining demand in the United States and China, the two largest mm -hmm. economies in the world. So if those that are, have their crystal ball and are looking at what oil prices are going to do coming into the future, and they're looking at China's and the United States economies, and they're thinking there's not going to be a lot of demand there, that's not a positive. So we'll have cheaper oil, uh, gas prices, we just won't be working. <laughs> or taking trips. Or taking trips, yes. Now, on to last week's uh, data. Mm -hmm on jobs, non-farm payroll jobs, uh, payrolls grew by 142,000. 
Now, for the longest time, we've had figures over 200,000. Mm -hmm. And then as we learned last week, there was a giant revision. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that the average from April 2023 through March of 2024 was actually closer to this number, about 170,000. Mm -hmm. So these, the, these weaker job numbers have been in place for a longer time. In addition, um, July's revised numbers added just 89,000 jobs. So still adding, we're not contracting, mm -hmm. but we're in that. Close to recession type of adding numbers. Yes. And the 142,000 was also well below the 161,000 that was forecast. So another indicator that there's acceleration in the mm -hmm. market that economists haven't quite caught. Mm -hmm. Acceleration in a deceleration way. Yes. So. So all of this put together has the uh, CME FedWatch tool currently projecting a 70% chance of a 25 basis point cut in a couple weeks when the Fed meets in September, and a 30% chance of a 50 basis points cut in okay. September. So, so as inflation approaches 2% and these other warning signs are in the, uh, in the tea leaves, then um, the Fed is much more anxious to act. And again, I think if they would have had the job numbers yeah. more accurate uh, earlier, that they probably would have already made a, a rate decrease. Yeah. Uh, further leading economic numbers, the Purchasing Managers Index uh, came out, and it was down... In, again this month after being down in July and it posted a 47.9. So anything below 50 is considered a contraction. Anything above 50 is considered ex expansion. So we are um, in that contraction area. And can you explain what that index means? So basically it, it's a survey of those that do purchasing mm -hmm. as to what their volumes are looking at and is, is collectively when you take that survey as a whole and you look that that purchasing is con constricting then that's an indication of a slowing of the economy so expecting future sales to be less so future sales to be less um yes less demand for their products uh, mm -hmm. so they're you know, they, they might be in manufacturing, so what they're buying are the raw materials that they use in manufacturing, et cetera, et cetera. They could be in retail, and mm -hmm. they're ordering fewer clothes, for example, or whatever. So, so it's a very broad index mm -hmm. that you're looking at there. Now, uh, also commented here is slower sales have led to rising inventories as unsold goods accumulate in warehouses marking some of the largest inventory gains since 2007. So that's, Here's our other date. This is our second date, yes. And that is when the Great Recession began. So we've had the Great Depression and the Great Recession. So are we going to have the Great Soft Landing? No, no, I don't think so. <laughs> that would be awesome. So, yes. and then new orders, especially export orders, have declined at the sharpest rate in over a year, prompting factories to cut production and reduce payrolls. So, On the uh, inventory front, that's such a change in three years' time from the supply chain issues of 2020, 2021, when you couldn't get anything and prices were going up so much with that inflation issue we had to now having inventory sitting in warehouses longer. Yes, and growing very fast, mm -hmm. yes. So it is a big shift. Mm -hmm. uh, I think some of this is also coming off of the sugar high that was the federal stimulus, uh, particularly on, mm -hmm. on the um, non-monetary side, but fiscal stimulus where, you know, everybody's getting checks from the federal government and right. it was free money. Right. And that sugar high has worn off and people kind of for 
a year, I would say, or longer, have been using their credit cards to get their sugar fix. And now they're looking at their credit card balances, which have been rising sharply, mm -hmm. and say, we can't do that anymore. Yeah. And so uh, going cold turkey off the sugar is leading to these numbers. And people ordering not quite catching up to that early enough. Correct. Correct. And then um, construction spending dropped in July by 0.3%, which doesn't sound like a lot, but the forecast was only 0.1% drop in construction. And private construction, including residential projects, dropped by 0.4%. So this was offset by federal construction. So okay. some of the work that the federal government's doing on infrastructure and whatnot. So if you look at the private sector, the private sector has actually dropped by nearly half a percent in construction. And uh, that's one of the indicators that we've been talking about wanting to watch. Yes, absolutely. And uh, private non-residential structures like factories also dropped by 0.4%. Okay. So it's not just residential building that has um, slowed. It's also manufacturing mm. type, type construction. And then um, finally, elevated mortgage rates in the spring have slowed home building, leading to an inventory sur surplus in some areas and the lowest single family home, home building levels in 16 months. So you, you're see, seeing the builders starting to tighten their belts yeah. and trying not to get overly exposed in the market um, mm -hmm. with inventory that they have to pay interest on before, yeah. And they're still super jumpy from the Great Recession yes. and the number of builders who went out of business during that time that, I mean, that's part of why they underbuilt for a decade following. Yes, um, they're very still very sensitive. Yep. And they're still underbuilding. And even yes. with the underbuilding, they're very cautious. And, you know, around the nation, we lo lost a lot of small local banks mm -hmm. because it's usually the often, not usually, but often the, the local banks in the community that lend money to builders mm -hmm. that are local builders. We're not yeah. talking about the big national builders. We're talking about the local builders. Yeah. And so when the local builders went under, the local banks went under and had to be taken over and mm -hmm. it was a state chartered bank or a federal charger bank, you know, whatever regulatory agency had to come in and find a buyer for that bank and get it taken over. Mm -hmm. So on that upbeat news, I think I'm done with uh, economic talk. So I have a, a slight counterpoint from the uh, National Association of Realtors chief economist. I think I sent this one to you. Yes, yes. And he talks- Lawrence Young. Yes, he talks about what we've been talking about, net monthly job additions average 116,000 from three months to August. So averaging out those low July numbers and yeah. June and- Yep, and August. August, yeah. Um, and he said that historically outside of the Great Recession, uh, which was led by a housing market downfall, which we've talked about before. The weakening job market does not negatively affect home sales or prices if accompanied by falling interest rates. So his point was, if rates do come down and come down enough, you can sort of help keep the housing market going with even a fewer jobs if people can buy. Right. Well, and at this point, we're still expanding the economy. So, yep. but, you know, all we're saying is all of these indicators point to the expanding economy is coming to an end soon mm -hmm. and likely a recession of some kind mm -hmm. is, you know, all the, da all the data tell us, I think I did that right, <laughs> that that's where we're heading mm -hmm. now. What softens the blow is lower interest rates, yep. so um, which makes housing more affordable again. Mm -hmm. um, I, 
seen some indications that the high interest rates actually helped inflation, which is counterintuitive, because it made housing so expensive, which is such a big part of the CPI. Right. That because of the shortage of homes on the market and the high interest rates, that that cost of you know homeowner rent, so to speak, mm-hmm. kept on going up. And that kept inflation up, in addition to the other things that were going up. But that was a right. core piece, and that if had you maybe dropped interest rates sooner, that might have put more homes on the market as people got closer mm-hmm. to the, okay, I'm comfortable exchanging out my mortgage right now and going buying another home, um, that you might have seen home prices actually come down a little bit as inventory came onto the market. Now, that's a, you know, if I had a crystal ball and, you know, what if scenarios, but yeah. but that was at least one economist, what hmm. if scenario that um, had interest rates come down sooner, you might have actually slowed down inflation sooner. Interesting. Interesting theory. Yeah. We'll never know because we can't right. go and replay the last X number of, uh, well, 18 to 24 months. So. Right. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I have something a little different on the real estate side today. You do. I thought we would share a little bit about our newest listing on the market. Okay. So we have a new home that just hit the market earlier this week. Um, It is in the Heritage Highlands neighborhood of Dove Mountain, which is a 55 plus neighborhood here, active adult community. What are our other terms for 55 plus? Um, uh, Age qualified. Um, It's a leisure community for active seniors. Well, if you're asking Grandma and Erica, (laughs) it might be a sketchy neighborhood. (laughs) Or a lot of old people live here. Or a lot of old people live here, yes. So, should I tell those stories now? <laughs> sure. Okay. Because I, I think we might need to sell t-shirts <laughs> on this, this at some point in time. So, um, when, when my mom reached the age that she was having trouble keeping her meds straight and ended up with a couple hospital visits, um, it, it was time to put mom into assisted living. And, and she lived you know, almost two hours away from me. And so... Mm-hmm. Rather than that, I said, well, why don't I move you to a assisted living close to my home? Mm-hmm. She came kicking and screaming, a uh, very independent German woman. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so, you know, we got her moved in. She had her stuff. And um, I, you know, thought I'd give it a week. Yeah. And so after a week, I, I said, well, Mom, what, what do you think? And she goes, you know, it's really not too bad here. She goes, they fix me three meals a day. They come and clean my apartment once a week. They make sure I get my meds three times a day. But, you know, there's a lot of old people that live here. (laughs) My mother, who was 83 at the time. Yeah. Yes. And then her favorite activity is she had a beautiful view Mm -hmm. uh, out her up upstairs window and um, she there was a county highway that would go by and she knew that I lived just five miles down the road uh, and and but she liked to sit and imagine where people were going were they going to the grocery store were they going to the doctor's office and she would just use her imagination to imagine where this car was going and that car was going well, one night she saw five police cars with their lights on and everything racing out my direction, which is toward was at the time towards the outskirts of Salem, Oregon, in West Salem. Yes. And I lived in a 55 and over neighborhood. Yes. In 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 West Salem. So I'm visiting my mom, and she's telling me this story, and then she finally leans forward and puts her hand on my hand. She goes. So I saw those five police cars go out towards your neighborhood. You can tell me, do you live in a sketchy neighborhood? So our big joke around here is, mm-hmm. you know, it's a sketchy neighborhood. So anyway, mm-hmm. now you... With a manned gate and... Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Anyway. 
So yeah, Grandma Erica, sketchy neighborhood, and a lot, a lot of, of old, old people. people. <laughs> I've interrupted you. You're going to talk about the lovely home that we have listed. I was. So it is in a 55 plus community mm -hmm. um, with great facilities, golf course, uh, restaurant and bar, tennis and pickleball courts, gym, swimming pool. Swimming pool. Yep. So all of the, I think, amenities that you'd be looking for in a neighborhood like this. Um, and then this particular home is a little over 1,600 square feet, two bed, two bath, um, with a west-facing backyard that gets you sunset views, mountain views, and uh, Marana City light views as well. Um, on the inside, the seller did a good number of updates um, in the time that they've been there. And so they've done new um, granite waterfall countertops in the kitchen. Um, also new counters in both of the bathrooms and updated the, the light fixtures and mirrors and all of yes. that in the bathrooms. Um, repainted white kitchen uh, cabinets there, mm -hmm. stainless steel appliances. Um, in the rooms that have carpet, they put in new carpet with an upgraded pad. And they also did some of the things that you maybe don't necessarily see or think about all the time. So there's also a new uh, HVAC system in there, which down here, is a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, other places of the country, those things last 25 years and it's not that big of an issue. Here, the lifespan is 10 to 15 years expected. If you maintain it well, it can go longer than that, but having a new one goes a long way. They in work hard the in the summertime. Yes, they do. Yeah. So um, this one is listed at 500,000. And... So a couple things. Mm -hmm. She's also added a pergola uh, yes. covered area on the west side, which helps with that, that setting, setting sun. sun. Yep. Uh, she also has a sunshade that you can bring down as well. That's electronic, so you don't even have to go out there and exactly. crank it down. Exactly, and she is a bit of a gardener. Yes. A bit of a gardener. <laughs> and she, she has a, a grapefruit tree, pink grapefruit. Pink grapefruit and mandarin orange. And mandarin orange, and while they're still green, the grapefruits, and I'm not kidding, are this big yes. on that thing. They, are huge. they look like small pineapples. <laughs> yes. That's how big they are. So uh, she, she takes very good care of, yes. of her garden. There's also a fountain back there and a raised seating area that basically used to have a fire pit that now is just a seating area that you can take in all those views from. Yeah, that's a really great vantage point for the city. Uh, mm -hmm. City lights at night and the mountain views and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Yep. Yeah. So if you're interested, contact information's down below in the in the um, description. Yep. Don't hesitate to reach out to us. We do virtual tool, tours. So if you're from yes. out of state, uh, matter of fact, a surprising number of our buying clients yes. are from out of state. So we've gotten very good yes. at uh, showing homes virtually. Yes. There's also a virtual tour and 3D dollhouse to be able to sort of walk around through the house without us. Um, yes. And the listing information as well. Yeah. You can drop the listing in the comment or in the description. I can. Mm -hmm. Please remind me to do that or just follow up behind me and put it in there when I forget. Editor's note to Scott for the future. <laughs> drop that in there. <laughs> You know, when I watch the video, that should remind me, you know, as I'm editing it, you know, to, oh, hey, I should go grab that and put that in the description right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our earlier conversation that may or may not still be in the video about my memory here lately while I'm on certain meds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's rock solid. Not. Do you have anything else to add about this listing? Well, we, we did have the opportunity the other evening when we were uh, doing a video, mm -hmm. and then we did a time lapse of the sunset, which I'll yes. be working on this week, uh, to, to actually spend the evening sitting out on that back patio with mm -hmm. the, the homeowner. Mm -hmm. Very enjoyable yeah, evening really nice. with, with uh, our, our seller. Um, and she is a real character with a real sense of humor, and we just love sitting and listening to her, her mm -hmm. stories that she tells, and so they're, they're, they're quite good. Yep. Um, 
She's lived a rich and a adventurous life. Yes. So, yeah. So anyway, if you could see yourself sitting out there and watching sunsets, mm. shameless plug number what, two, three, four? <laughs> this is a rather shameless promotion. Hey, it worked on me. Me too. Something like that. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for me on real estate at the moment. Okay. Um, do you want to talk about NASCAR? <sighs> yes. So um, we're skipping the Darlington race, which I thought was a banger. I mm -hmm. I, I love Darlington, and and we mentioned in the last video that might have been Kyle Bush's last chance to make the playoffs and it almost was it once almost again was. he finished second and so we it, got another new winner yes for the final win in your end spot yep chase briscoe won that race so we're not talking about that race although we just talked <laughs> but about it was it. a good race <laughs> but it was a good race so but today uh the yes. first round of the playoffs started mm -hmm. and they were at the fairly newly reconfigured Atlanta Speedway, which is now a basically a super speedway. They could keep their foot in it all the way around the track if they weren't trying to save fuel. At a mile and a half. At a mile and a half. And uh, it is high stress, high tension, the entire race. Yeah. And it was fun to watch. It mm -hmm. was exciting. A uh, couple drivers, uh, Chase Briscoe being one of them, and, and uh, Kyle Larson, both took pretty sizable playoff hits uh, when um, Kyle Larson's car twitched and he overcorrected and sent it straight up in the wall. And yep. Chase, not being able to see through all the tire smoke, ran into him at high speed. And sees in the corner, everything looks normal. Back end comes around and then. It went to the right. Now it appears to me. Oh, who hit him? Who was that that got Chase Briscoe? Briscoe? Two playoff drivers. Knocked mm -hmm. both their cars out. It basically eliminated Kyle Larson's advantage that he had built up with playoff points throughout the year. Yeah, he from basically all those races used those won. used those up. Yeah. Uh, it really hurt Chase because he did not have many. Yeah, he didn't points. have that buffer. So he, that, that hurt him. They had a couple more races to go uh, before the next cut. Mm -hmm. So they can, and they're talking about Watkins Glen and Bristol on the agenda. Anything, Anything can happen at either one of those. So yeah. we'll, we'll see. Uh, but Joey Logano punched his ticket uh, to the next round. Yep. Because once again, if you win, you're in. You're into the next round mm -hmm. of the playoffs. And so... Um, a lot of pressure off of him the next couple of races. Of course, he's going to want to earn more playoff points. Yeah. But, um, yeah. That's a team that when they get hot at the right time, they're really good. Yeah. That and we team. saw that in 22 when they won championship. Is it 22 or 23? 23 was Blaney. Same team. Yeah. Well. Oh. I'm talking uh, about particularly. You're talking sub-team yes. of the Penske team. Yes. What we've got here is failure to communicate. Yes, what she said. <laughs> and he won in 22 also. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Penske knows how to peak for the playoffs. Yes. That is for sure. Mm -hmm. So So that's what I had there. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the National Football League, the NFL, has kicked off their season this yes. weekend. As has college football, right? As, well, college football kind of started they the started early. week, week okay. earlier. Uh, what NFL did this year, though, is they had a game on Thursday night and then they had a game on Friday night rather than waiting to Sunday to start the season. And the, uh, the uh, Thursday night game was a thriller as Kansas City beat Baltimore by a toenail. And I will flash up a photo as to why I say a toenail <laughs> because Baltimore on the last play of the game had what looked like the winning touchdown but by this much the toe of the receiver was out of bounds at the back of the end zone nullifying the play so 
Uh, Kansas City got away with a very close game. Mm -hmm. I kind of question Baltimore's strategy. They brought in one of the biggest bruising running backs the game has seen for quite some time. And first drive, they marched down the field. He carried the ball five times. He scored a touchdown. And then they used him a total of eight more carries for the rest of the game. And he's a guy that, you know, when he gets to 25 and 30 carries in a game, he really gets rolling. Yeah. Number one, people get tired of tackling him <laughs> yeah. because he runs people over and he just gets that momentum going. And so the question is, why, why do you bring the guy in if you're not going to use him? And that also takes pressure off their quarterback right. to a certain extent who's been carrying the team for the last five years. Yeah. So anyway, and then um, the second game was played in Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Green Bay lost to the Philadelphia Eagles in another fairly close game. Mm -hmm. uh, the big news out of that one was Jordan Love, who just signed a new multi-year, very high-priced contract with Green Bay, uh, left the game towards the end of the game uh, with a very painful looking injury. Turns out he has a Jeez. MCL sprain, it wasn't a tear, and so they expect he should be back within four to six weeks. But it looked almost like it could have been season ending the way as much pain as he was in when it first occurred. Almost an Aaron Rodgers repeat from last season. Yes, yes. Which is our Monday night game tomorrow. Yes, San Francisco against Green Bay. Uh, Kelly was wondering earlier uh, tonight why the Jets would warrant a Monday night game and, you know, obviously we think it's because of Aaron Rodgers, but then I thought of another thing. Okay. The head coach for the New York Jets is the former defensive coordinator for the 49ers. Oh. And so there's that. That as well. That aspect as well. I mean, it's okay. reaching a little bit, but, yeah. but yes. So we're going to see if Aaron Rodgers can make it more than four plays this season. Yeah. I have the over on that. Yeah. I think that's probably a safe bet. Yeah. You would have thought it was a safe bet last year, though, too, so. True. But we never know when that nasty little Achilles tendon is going to just decide to snap. Yeah. That's all I have. Uh, I think my favorite part of the NFL being back is our friend, the ADD channel. Yes, the Red Zone channel. That's the real name for it. We call it the ADD channel. Yes. And it's terrible for housework. <laughs> Because I'll, I'll go move the laundry in the, during the next commercial. There are no commercials. It's, it's six, seven hours of nonstop football. And yeah. they're moving from one game to the next game to the next game. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Um, it is great for background noise, though. It is great for background noise. Mm -hmm. And when the announcers get really loud and excited, you look up and watch yeah. that. But then you get back to whatever you're doing. And uh I'm sure someone studying it would say it'd be terrible for multitasking. But. Yes. I, I give kudos to the guy uh, that hosts that show because yeah. th there are no bathroom breaks. <laughs> I mean, he... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because he's calling each switch Yeah. to each game. Yeah. And then he'll run, rewind some stuff and say, you know, this just happened a few minutes ago in this game. We wanted you to see it. Yeah. They weren't on it live. Right. When you yeah. get those, oh, that was a 50-yard touchdown pass. Well, they weren't in the red zone when that started, so. Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, unless my 49ers are playing, yes. I have the red zone channel on. F1 was off this weekend. Yes. We did have an exciting race last weekend, which I know you said we weren't going to talk about, but it was Monza and Ferrari won in Monza. Yes, which meant a week-long party in the <laughs> yes. whole entire country of Italy yes. uh, to celebrate. And Charles Leclerc. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you only win two races in a year to win Monaco and to win Monza with Ferrari. Those are the two you'd pick. Yeah. Yes, very much so. And then to also have Ferrari out strategy another team after the last couple of years. That was different. Yes. Although Charles was very upset 
at first yes. because he felt he'd been undercut by Lando Norris. Mm -hmm. And then they whispered in his ear what the plan was. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that was quite good. Um, Checo Perez made an interesting comment yes. after the race uh, that now Max knows what it's like to drive the car I've been driving. Yeah, he very strongly insinuated that they had not been driving the same car for the first half of the season. Yes, which also explains why Red Bull was giving Checo a pass and didn't fire him during the summer break. Mm -hmm. Because now that the FIA has come out, and I forgot, it's the something to do with the braking. Yeah. Um, a few moments later. Asynchronous? Asynchronous braking. Is that the right? Or asymmetrical? Asymmetrical, thank something you. Something like that. Yeah, asymmetrical. Um, so apparently maybe Max was running an asymmetrical braking system, and Checo wasn't, and now there isn't that much difference between the two of them. Mm -hmm. I'll put one of the conspiracy things, theory yeah. <laughs> things in there. Uh, conspiracy theory. But it was an interesting comment because mm -hmm. I think he's gotten tired of all the criticism that he's yes. been receiving. And I don't blame him, especially if we are driving two different cars. Yes. Next weekend is Baku, Azerbaijan. Yes. Another tight road circuit, street circuit which Checo normally does really well on. So yes, we'll see what happens there. So I will be curious as to how that plays out. And then just the only other thought or comment is McLaren clearly has the fastest cars now. Yeah. But they have the, they have Ferrari two years ago strategy. strategy. Yeah. It, I think the other thing with them is that they're clearly the fastest car when they have clean air. If they don't have clean air, they're a smidge faster. But that car, I think more than any of the others, needs clean air. Well, they all perform better with clean air, that's for sure. I think their difference is more noticeable than some of the other teams. Well, we'll see how this works out when you get on a road course. I mean, a street, street. circuit. Yeah. That was a road course. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for not talking about F1, mm -hmm. we well. just spent four and a half minutes talking well, about F1. That was, you know, like a third of the amount of time it could have been. True. True. <laughs> what else do you have? I think that's most of what I've had for this week. Again, another busy week, so haven't done a whole lot. Okay. This week, the um, second part of Emily in Paris comes out, so I can finally watch the first part. And we've been waiting for that. Mm hmm so uh, will you have binged watch the whole thing by next Sunday so that we can get a uh, Kelly's review? Possibly. Depends on how the week goes. The yes. weekend. Because we do work in real estate and our weeks are sometimes quite unpredict uh, yeah, unpredictable. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's what I've got coming up. I have no idea what I'm doing this week other than editing a video or four. Yeah, I was gonna say, you've got at least two to edit. Yes. So yeah, I'll be doing that. Locked up again in my house. Yeah, we gotta get him out more. I do need to get out more. Well, yes, go ahead. By the time this airs, will our episodes be on other streaming platforms? Uh, one of them will be. <laughs> one episode. We don't know about the other ten. No, because I, I want to get out this week's video and then work on getting out the previous, the other nine that still need to get out as well. Plus this one. Plus this one. This one will definitely go out on the other streaming or uh, uh, podcast platforms. Okay. Um, and then I'll work going back historically and add the other ones add the other ones okay God, i got an exciting week ahead of me <laughs> let me tell you okay so <laughs> starting with this one you can listen on apple and spotify does that also go out to amazon it may 
We haven't really figured this part out yet, so. We'll put it in the description which ones we're on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We should have looked that up. I mean, we did post it yesterday. We could have seen which ones it was on. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. almost mentioned to you earlier, hey, why don't you go see where you can find, find our podcast. It. Yeah. Highly polished uh, media production machine <laughs> here. That's the Hera team. Mm -hmm. We all have to start somewhere though, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well. So uh, you can listen to this for sure on YouTube uh, Music. Yes. You can watch us on YouTube. Yes. Which you may be doing if you're not listening to us on YouTube music. Mm -hmm. And uh, please like and subscribe because I know that this has been a banger episode that you'd want to get more of this <laughs> incredible steaming pile of... <laughs> uh -huh. You're done now. I, I, I am done <laughs> and probably fired also <laughs> from the team. Yes, I <laughs> oh. All right, we'll see you next week. It may be a solo podcast, who knows? There have been other people that fired their podcast <laughs> partners recently, so I might just join the unemployed list of <laughs> podcasters. Have a great week. See you next weekend. Bye. <laughs>